Hello, welcome to part one of the history of computing in Cambridge. It's a torch hard disk machine. Never, never seen one of them. Well, I have now, but. And that is a complete computer system. It's from Acorn. Um, this is, looks like a pile of circuit boards, uh, chips, and what have you. Acorn computer. Don't really know a lot about them. And we have an MK14. And an Acorn prototype. Oh, it's a prototype on Acorn board next door. Again, don't know a lot about them. Hey, here we go. This is more like it. This is the Commodore VIC-20. That's playing Space Cadet. And the screen's flickering because it's a CRT screen. And that is a joystick for you kids with the, with the auto fire button switch. This is a PC. None of this i7 gigahertz rubbish. It's 33 megahertz. And it's running Space Quest. I think there's an ad lib card. Or Sound Blaster MTX card on there. And the keyboard has no Windows key. Got a CD ROM there and a floppy drive. There's USB rubbish. And there is a couple of um, Raspberry Pis playing the Minecraft. We go on to the Casio VL Tone. Classic 80s keyboard and calculator. <laughs> That's the rhythm used in Da 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 Trio. There you go. Right, let's move on to what else we can find. That is a synthesizer with an iPad connected. And for all you kids out there, these are arcade machines. That is, um, what was that? That was Thunderblade, Street Fighter. That is Defender. And that's an iCade, a multiple select um, machine. So we go back and look at that's uh, Defender. Let's have another look at that one. And there's uh, Street Fighter 2 next door to it. I think they're on free play. So I'll let me just check in. And there's Thunderblade. Let's go and look in a 1980s classroom. Right, so we're inside the what's uh, typically an 80s classroom, but you wouldn't have seen these machines because they're IMAX, they're probably G4, uh, G5, but you would have seen one of these. This is a BBC Model B, and we had two in my primary school, one in the juniors and one in infants on a trolley. And you had the old microvet car monitors with them. Used to move it about classroom to classroom, and if you behave yourself, you could uh, go go on in the BBC. There you are there's the joystick. There you are, there's some more BBC stuff there. It's got a B, but it don't work at the moment. Power supply failed, and that is a big track. It's not an original. That's a remake. And we got computer programming basic for beginners. And let's have a look at this other book, computer handbook. Look at the big tracks, and what you had to do on this big tracks was typing commands. So we zoom in, type commands in, you can press forward three and it go, and it go forward three three times. Here we go, we've got a Acorn monitor and a 380Z research machine. Never seen one, never used one. There we go, I um, RM Nimbus, no, it's IBM rubbish. I did my first uh, art project on that in 1989. Lovely, real machines. No Windows key on that keyboard, lovely. There's a um, another BBC with dual disk drives. And another one. And there is a BBC uh, Master Compact. Trying to be like the PC type things. And Archimedes was there. And this is the Doomsday Project on the BBC. We never had one of these at school. I'm not sure what it was, but it was, it was running and you had the the little mouse ball thing there, track trackpad. A picture of a BBC. And here we go, look at this old tape recorder. This is an Acorn data recorder. Neighbor had one of these with his Acorn Electron. It's got the buttons there. And there's a BBC user guide. 
Right, there's a Raspberry Pi. It's all set up. It's what they're going to have in modern in schools these days. They want kids to learn programming. What kids do is play Minecraft on them. And there's a Raspberry and running on that one. I'm not sure whether they're models two or model three. And this is a, another BBC with the twin disk drives. So I look to see what programs on there. And this one's got a like a network Econet station. Now we used to have our BBCs in my uh, secondary school. Um, network together. Yeah. So we used to none of this online rubbish. We used to have them all network together, all linked linked up together. I'm trying to look for something on disk, but no. It's all set up so you can sit there and have a little go. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can type in print. Speech marks. Retro. Gamer. JL. 78. Yeah. Close the speech marks and push return. There you go. To our first command on the BBC. That's 64k BBC. That is. Nice. They are, we go to the other room, and that's a St. Clair ZX80. That is a ZX Spectrum 128 Plus with a heat grill on the side and a micro drive. That is a Jupiter Ace, done by St. Clair, ex St. Clair employees. That is an Auric 1 and an Auric Atmos. And here is a Acorn Electron with a plus 3 interface. And uh, Acorn Atom, which I've never ever seen. And some links computer, which was a bit um, a bit of a weird one, a rare one. I've never seen one before. And there's a Macintosh Classic SE, and there's a Apple II SE. There's Apple II uh, GS graphics down, sorry, and that's a Wozniak edition. And there's that Macintosh SE again, and these are like Brazilian clones of machines. I'm not sure what one this was. Short machine this was, but never seen them, never used them. That was a Brazilian ZX Spectrum clone of the 48K, and it was actually looked better than the um, one we got over here, and that's like a ZX81 Brazilian clone. I don't know what these are, these were just there. Here we go, this is an Acorn Risk PC 600. Again, no Windows key, no keyboard, three button mouse. With a roller ball, nice optical disc rub, uh, mouse rubbish your kids have got. And this is an Amstrad Mega PC. It's like a 386 and Mega Drive in one. And there's the controller. It's normally black, the Mega Drive controller, but that's the Amstrad version. Again, no Windows key on the keyboard. And literally, you just take the cartridge out, slide it across, and then it went to the PC. This is the mighty Amiga 500. They didn't use a 1200. Because of compatibility issues with software, but I've told them how to, get, how to get get around that. And that is a three and a half inch floppy disk for all you kids out there. And this is how the games used to come. Used to come on a floppy disk in cardboard boxes like that. Lovely. That is the Commodore 1081 monitor. Quite expensive back in the day. And this is the Atari ST, and that is a the Atari like tank mouse. It's got a ball in that one, nice optical rubbish. That's a 1040 ST, so I had the megabyte in there. Again, look at it. These machines have got no Windows keys on them, as that should be. Get rid of that solid Windows key. And it's got MIDI ports on the side, because that was used in music production studios. It ran Cubase and Logic, I believe. Let's go and have a look at this one. This, that's a joystick. It's got a couple of buttons on it. That many buttons it's got. It's only got one button. Atari 65XE, similar design to the um, Atari ST with the function keys, keys there, and a Philips monitor. This is an Amstrad 6128, and uh, Darren Over had one of these. He chucked it in the skip. Don't know why. And this is a three-inch disc. And there's Rainbow Islands, and a Sir Wolf. Played them both. Played both of them games. Normally, if that monitor is a monitor tuner, there's some couple of cassettes for the Amstrad. That's a Harry Attack, Amsoft, Roland on the ropes, and Harry Attack. I used to play around my friend's house. 
Christopher's house, Chris Capsie's house, back in the day, spent hours on that game. There's a few more cassettes here. That's the outrun on the six, uh, 64, straight 128. There's an Einstein computer. I knew nothing about this. And apparently the disk drive, you can access load commands on there. And so they did some of the copy protection on some of the games. It's an Einstein machine. Never, never seen one. I think that's running three inch disc as well, and that's from 1984. That's a data set. That's the El Commodore cassette drive. That's a joystick, got a couple of buttons, but there's only one button on that. The only buttons it's got, it's only got one button. There's a C64, and that's the Breadbin model. At the back of it is an easy flash cartridge, and it's running Manic Miner. It was uh, programmed by a bloke who I think went to Chancellor School. There's some more cassettes. That was Kung Fu Master. Uh, yeah, cassettes you get in the front of magazines. They are Mildeen, Paper Boy. I could have done that as my cheapest challenge. Maybe I, done, maybe I would have done better in a cassette version. And this is a Dragon 32. A Welsh company did this. And apparently, you can't type in lowercase letters. It's all uppercase. So you couldn't really use it for web processing, but you could use it for programming and, more importantly, playing games. I don't know what game it is. I'm trying to work out how to play it. And this is a TI-994A, Texas Instruments. They do calculators and stuff these days. And this is a... I'm not sure what game's running. It's like a Space Invaders clone on there. J is left, K is right. Yeah, TI 99 Invaders. There we go, I'm trying to have a little go. And I died, so I'm not very good at that one. Score 10. This is a Dixon's TR17 cassette recorder. Look at it, that's how we used to load our games up on cassette. None of this uh, hard drive rubbish or, disk drive or DVD rubbish. One kilobyte RAM, none of this gigabyte rubbish. That's the machine itself, under £179 uh, when that came out. Black and white, but it's not turned on. I'm not sure what sort of machine this was. It's quite interesting though, but again, it wasn't wasn't uh, turned on. Well, we've got a Game Boy original, DMG Game Boy. We've got a Game Boy Color. Tori Lynx, James Brown, I love that. Oh, he wants a Lynx one. Sega Game Gear. We've got a Game Boy Advance, the one you need to be under sun to see the screen, an Engage, and a Nintendo DS original. We've got an Acorn Atom. I think it's a black and white machine. I'm not, I ain't too sure. I've never used one. I've only ever seen one in this museum. It's the first machine before the BBC. That's from 1980. And this is a Memotech MTX 512 from 1983. Got quite a nice keyboard, and again, these machines have got no Windows key out. It should be. This is a Commodore Plus 4. It's more like a business machine because it had like a spreadsheet and work processor built in, into it. And it was a, uh, yeah, they should have shouldn't, shouldn't have done this one. They should have just kept with the 64. So I'll switch it off. See if we can get it to work. Yay, back on. Hey, we've got some screen there now. Just push one of the function keys. 3 plus 1. There's a data cassette. Different connections on that from that to the C64. I'll just push return and nothing's happened. Got the old blank screen again. It's not good. Again, there's no Windows key on that keyboard. Yay. And we've got a lot of... Um, oh yeah, there's another piece at uh, Acorn Machine there. It's an Archimedes, I believe. Let's go have a look at it. Oh, oh, look at this. G4, I believe, iMac. With the old uh, cube at the bottom. Apple keyboard. It's got an Apple key on that one. Optical mouse. None of this ball rubbish you kids saw earlier. It's an optical mouse. There's an Apple II. 2E, I believe that is. It's the size of them disk drives. I think that tele monitor looks like just a rebadged television set, like most of them were. 
Yeah. Yes, we got, oh, we got an original iMac. You remember this? Um, sorry, original Macintosh. Remember that Mac's probably about 35 years old. So you don't expect it to be in pristine condition. Only one machine what Apple pushed. So we're going to have a look. Apple. And we're going to go about the finder. Or about this Macintosh. Just like you can do on a modern Mac. So things haven't really changed. Look at the keyboard. And look at the mouse. The keyboard's got no function keys and no external keypad. This function key rubbish. And this is the um, iMac. Now I nearly bought one of these back in the day. This is a G3 or G4 I believe. And yeah. Got no floppy drive. Apple got rid of it. So they're mad. That's a hockey puck mouse. And there's the Apple keyboard. They said Apple you're mad getting rid of floppy drive. And that's got the coloured backs if you remember them. See what else we can find. They are an Altar 8800 computer. I don't know what, never used one. They've never seen one in the museums. I think it's just flash, flashing lights. So you have to program the switches. See what else we can find. Here we go. MSI 8080. This machine got us into World War Three. Well, Matthew Boderick done it back in War Games. It's a machine they used, or a, a machine they used in War Games. In 1983, a very good film. And this is an EMAC. There we go, a nice EMAC. Let's have a look at these screens. Oh, go. Look at this Apple screen. That was, um, yeah, considered a, a good screen back in the day. And this is the Apple Cube. I think they released that in the year 2000. I'm not too sure, though. That's it for part one.